the topic to discuss because we are talking about our country. We're segmenting the country into 36 tiny little bits and the FCT and then trying to see how the engine works. See, I want to start by defining a developing country. What is a developing country? A developing country is a country that has perfected the art of doing things wrongly. Because once you start doing things rightly, you will also start emerging as a good country. And then you become developed. And our country has always been a developing country from the beginning to, to date. Therefore, somehow, we have not decided to review. No, are, are you saying from the beginning, that's from 1960? That once you are a developing country, it doesn't yes. matter. Take it to 1900 if you want. Once you are tagged a developing country, it means so many things are, doing, are not going well. And the reason why things don't go well is because either you are deliberately not doing them well, or you don't know what to do, but you are doing the wrong things. Once you start panel beating what you do correctly, you will also start seeing benefits of that rightness, and that is development. So I break good governance on that, on that platform into three things. What is good governance? Governance traditionally is to ensure that your people in that particular locality or area or state or whatever, their quality of life develops. That is really the whole aspect of governance. Okay. And at three levels, the first level is that as the driver of the good governance, you must make sure that poverty, absolute poverty, is very low. People must drink clean water so that they don't face waterborne diseases. They must have good sanitation because we are people who are chopping our bitter leaf. We eat by hand. We sit and talk together. So your sanitation must be good. Otherwise, you are just eating disease. You must be able to eat well. So your food supply must be good. You must be able to, children must go to school. You know, there's nothing like you say, oh, the, 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 the enrollment rate in my state is 60%. What happened to the 40%? That is not a very good. So... These basic necessities are the first level for good governance. And you, as the driver, must know that. You must know when you are coming in and when you are going out, what is this. At the second level, you must make sure that you ginger the energy of that system to make sure that your people live peacefully, united, and active. Therefore, they must have skills so that they use that skills to gainfully do things. If they are farming, they should farm well. If they are welding, they should weld well. If they are whatever. So they must, you must ginger this middle class to be very vibrant. They are selling bitter leaf. They are doing pomo. They are doing pama put. Everybody is busy doing one thing on the basis of know-how. And at the third level, good governance, is that you must make sure that these things continue to get better and they will not get better without good institutions. So you have to develop institutions to make sure that even if you are dead, even if there is no leader, that middle class is maintained and is getting better. Poverty does not rise again, it's getting lower and lower. So this is the art of governance, and you are given the responsibility to do that. So the first challenge is that knowing these three levels, the leader must know this, must constantly not lose focus. To, of these targets, it must be monitoring this, and this is a skill, this is know-how, you know. You cannot do these things, like Oga is saying, if you are not budgeting well. You cannot budget well if you don't have data. You cannot have data if you are not conscious of what is happening. This demands technical competence, and fear of God, and commitment, and, uh, you know, patriotism, to be able to see. That is why, where you have good systems and good governance, the leader is always getting older and older and older, graying and so on and so forth. But where you have the whole thing is opposite, you see the leader getting better and better and better because you're not thinking, you're not getting bothered, you're not seeing your own dashboard to say, oh my God, and so on and so forth. So then how do you get these leaders to know this so that they can be able to do that? That brings you to the electoral process. That is the only platform we have. So if that is wrong, you are going to get the wrong person, who is not prepared, who will not track these things, and then who will not do them, and at the end of the day, you continue just collapsing. It's a gradual. So now, 
uh, uh, the, the, as Oga said, at the state level, I was secretary to the government. I went there as a technocrat. By the time I left, I became a polytechnic. <laughs> I, yeah, a, bit, a bit of politics with my technocrat, you know, garnished a little bit. But I learned very well. Some people were saying, Dr. Bindi, you will not survive here. But I'm a scientist. A scientist likes problems. He wants to be in a laboratory to be trying to solve things. And I enjoyed it. I saw everything. I can write a book on how Nigeria can never make it if, and I will stop with a dot, 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 dot. You know? So it, it, these are the initial things I have to say on the energy of good governance as a target, how you do that, and who actually helps you to get there. Dr. Bender, you have.